Praise the Lord. Alleluia. The King of Kings will reign in every life in Jesus' name. Father, well, thank you. Thank you for the plan of the ages. Thank you, Lord, because your plan revealed in prophecy have been coming on and every detail is being fulfilled. Christ came the first time. He died for us. He was raised again from the dead. He appeared unto his own disciples. 40 days with infallible proof that that same Jesus who died for us who was buried, who rose again, is still alive. And then is gone back to heaven. But the plan continues that Christ is coming again. Our Lord is coming again. He'll come for the church at the rapture. There will be great tribulation on the earth after the rapture. And then after the seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of great, great tribulation, then Christ will appear again. He will come again. And Lord, I pray when he comes to reign on this earth, my brother there, my sister there, believers, we will reign with him in Jesus' name. Prepare us for his coming. And help us, Lord, to touch other lives and to prepare them for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We're going into your word now. Speak to every heart. Keep everyone alive, awake, so that your word will not be lost on anyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church said, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. At this time, we're now coming to the final message of the retreat. And you see, of the program, we'll continue tonight. You'll be there tonight. And we continue tomorrow. Young people, tomorrow we continue. And something marvelous will happen to every life. And you know, for the rest of us in Lagos here, tomorrow, the blessing will keep on flowing. To me. To me. And everything God has planned to do in your life in this retreat with GCK everything will be done you are going back home when we finish tomorrow night with power vision and with the purpose of life your life will not be relegated to the background you are going to succeed and you are going to be significant Amen. Now we come to Emmanuel, Jesus, the coming king. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And we're reading from verse 62. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou no nothing? What is this which these witnesses with these witness against thee. Look at verse 63. But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be Christ the son of God 64 in 64 Jesus says unto him thou hast said nevertheless I say 
unto you hereafter hereafter after the crucifixion hereafter after the death hereafter after the burial hereafter after the resurrection hereafter after the ascension that something was still going to take place beyond the imagination or understanding of the high priest that hereafter shall ye see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power and coming after death and coming after the burial and coming after the resurrection and coming after the ascension coming in the clouds of heaven when will that be fulfilled because that has not been fulfilled now the death has been fulfilled the burial has been fulfilled the resurrection has been fulfilled and the ascension to heaven that has been fulfilled sitting on the right hand of the almighty god in heaven that has been fulfilled but the coming in the clouds of heaven is yet to be fulfilled emmanuel jesus will come as the king revelation chapter 19 and i'm reading from verse 11 revelation chapter 19 verse 11 and i saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war verse 12 and it says his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns not the other kind of crown the crown of thorns not that one not the mockery crown the mockery crown this is the crown for majesty this is the crown for the coming king upon he said many crowns and he had a name reaching that no man no knew but he himself verse 13 it says in verse 13 and he was closed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god verse 14 and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horses closed in a fine linen white and clean verse 15 in verse 15 and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that he with it shall smite the nations and that he shall rule them with the rod of iron when he comes back he's going to rule rule the earth rule the world with a rod of iron and he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the and the wrath of the almighty god verse 16 and in verse 60 he says and he has on his vesture and on his tie a name reaching king of kings and lord of lords we're talking about him this morning in the language of prophecy emmanuel jesus the coming king three things we're looking at number one the prophecy and the promise of christ's second coming number two the plan and program of christ's soon sudden coming number three our pursuit and preparedness for christ's soon coming let's look at number one number one we're looking at the prophecy and the promise 
of Christ's second coming. Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Here, the Lord himself declared, is come the first time. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. But after that first coming, is coming again. Matthew 16, 27. But the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his father the first coming he came through virgin mary in the manger but now is coming again and the second coming will not be like he came in his city in bethlehem and nobody in the other in the rest of the world knew except the wise men but now the son of man shall come future prophetic in the glory of his father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works definitely is coming again revelation chapter one reading from verse seven behold he cometh of the clouds and every eye shall see him when he came the first time herod did not even know he had been born he had to ask the priest where will the king of the jews be born and they said in Bethlehem, for that is what the word of God says, that thou, Bethlehem, Judea, you are not, you are the least of all the people in Judah, and yet out of thee shall come, shall come a ruler. He has been from his goings, had been from everlasting. And he said, go and search him out. Not everybody knew, but now, when Christ comes again, he says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth is coming, will affect all the kindreds of the earth, they shall wail because of him, even so amen look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says i am alpha i am omega the beginning and the ending says the lord which is and which was which and which is to come the almighty it tells us it's coming again and a number of times when he was here on earth he spoke about that coming in John chapter 14 verse 1 let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me look at verse 2 in verse 2 in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go it went through the veil of death, burial, and resurrection. He went through that event of the ascension. I go to prepare a place for you. And as he has gone to conclude the events of the first coming. Look at verse 3 now. It says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again the word again means i've come before you've seen me you've lived with me you've been in boat with me and i will die i'll be buried and yet i will come again that again that means the second time and then when he comes he says i will receive you unto myself that where I am, there 
ye shall be also. Somebody shout amen. I told when he comes, he now begins to reveal to us how he'll be coming. Matthew chapter 24. We're looking at Bastachi. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from Bastachi. Then and then shall appear the Son of the Son of Man in heaven. Not in the manger. In heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming. Coming. Coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Look at verse 31. It says in verse 31, And he shall send his angels with great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. They had given their lives to the Lord. He shall gather his elect from the four winds of the earth. The four winds is talking about everywhere, the north, the south, the east, the west. From the four winds, from the end of heaven to the other. And it tells us in verse 36, it says, But at the day and the hour of the day and the hour knoweth no man. No guesswork, no pretension, no pretending of knowing the secret that no man knew. No man knoweth. No, not the angels of heaven. This secret of his coming is reserved in the hand of the Father. It's not given to angels to pry into this secret. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Verse 37, but... At the days of Noah were. The Lord is saying this coming has been illustrated. Even in the Old Testament. As the days of Noah were. So shall also the coming. Look at that word again. The coming of the son of man be. Verse 38. It says for us in the days of Noah. That were before the flood. They were eating and drinking. Marrying and giving in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. There will be people that will be carrying on. The normal, usual, daily activity. And they will say, I'm just... And in my honest living, am I committing sin by walking, by eating, by drinking? Are we committing sin by marrying and giving a marriage? No, there are things that are not sinful that will hinder people from making it at the time when Christ will come. They'll just be engaged and involved with things, normal things, ordinary things that people are engaged in, marrying and giving a marriage, the concentration, working, studying, going to school, having education, the normal thing. But they do not think about the coming of the Lord. Jesus said, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. In verse 39, it says, A new not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He gives assurance. He is coming. 
and the coming will be like this the people will be carrying on normal usual daily regular things and you'll say we're not committing sin yes we're not gonna come into bible study but we're not sinning but you're also engaged we have to make ends meet and other people will say yes we don't have time to come to church now we're in real preparation for marriage and the preparation for marriage the organizing of marriage mc and you know all that all that is so important now i will want to make life joyful happy for people but that takes them away from thinking of the coming of the son of god the coming of the soon returning king and they are lost look at mark chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 26 and then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds there's no doubt in all these scriptures we are reading it talks about he is coming in the clouds where great power and glory verse 27 it says in verse 27 and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the uttermost part of the earth from the uttermost part of the earth the coming of the lord will affect every part of the world the villages even those villages that are not on the map but people are there and people are living there he will send forth his angels and then it says to the uttermost part of the earth to the uh, of, of of heaven then in verse 28 it says now learn a parable the people don't have time to learn the people who are so glued to the activities of every day there's no mind there's no heart there's no time to learn of the greatest event the momentous event that will take place the religious people like you like me like us we have programs and we have everything we do some of the programs daily we do some of the programs weekly we do some of the programs monthly but we do not have the time to learn and jesus said don't just carry on with project and program learn now learn a parable of the fig tree when a branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves you know that summer is near verse 29 in verse 29 so ye in like manner when ye shall see these things come to pass what things nation against nation kingdom against kingdom earthquakes in diverse places pestilence unknown pestilences sicknesses we never heard of before when you hear all these ravaging things in the world covid that we never had covid 19 we never saw before when you see these things happening come to pass know that it is nice near even at the door look at verse 30 in verse 30 verily i say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled and he tells us in verse 31 it says heaven and earth shall pass away but 
my word shall not pass away in verse 32 in verse 32 but of that day and that hour knoweth no man no not the angels which are in heaven neither the son but the father look at verse 33 it says take ye heed watch and pray eat but watch and pray drink water but watch and pray marry but watch and pray give in marriage but watch and pray follow the necessary activities of life but watch and pray and let the understanding the event of the coming of the lord be at the center of your life for ye know not when the time is look at luke chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 28 luke 17 verse 28 likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Jesus said, the people who are immersed in activity, they don't have time to think about and they don't have time to learn about the coming of the Lord. Eating and drinking. Buying and selling. Planting and building. You see, we need to understand that whatever good activities we're carrying on in life, we must have and we must put the coming of the Lord at the center of our hearts verse 29 in verse 29 but the same day that lord went out of sodom he trained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all the rapture will take place before the great tribulation noah was secured in the ark before the flood and lord and the two daughters escaped before the fire came on sodom and destroyed them all look at bastachi in bastachi even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed bastachi two in bastachi two remember lord's wife what did he say remember lord's wife because lord's wife could also have escaped but there's no eternal security for the careless there is no eternal security for the carnal there is no eternal security for the people they're always looking back and then rising falling rising falling rising uh, until the day that christ comes and the rising and falling uh, now is one event too much and if you're like that you come in you get saved at every retreat then you go back you're back in your scene you're back in the world again then you come for another retreat and then you get saved again i'm back i'm back and then you go back again you've gone into the normal scene the activities of this life will not allow you to so plan your life live your life that you are consistent the old habit like the force of gravity always pulling you down jesus said remember lord's wife christ is coming let us just say amen look at acts chapter one in acts chapter one here the angels revealed that christ will come again we're looking at acts chapter one verse nine 
And when he had spoken the things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10. In verse 10, and while they looked, said firstly, toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men, two angels appearing like men, stood by them in white apparel. Verse 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, the Son. This same Jesus, the Savior. This same Jesus, the Sanctifier. The same Jesus, the Healer. The same Jesus, the Baptizer in the Holy Ghost. This same Jesus, who had lived with you and appeared unto you, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come come is coming back it shall so come the angels confirmed the angels affirmed that this same jesus shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven and when he comes again i pray you will be among the people. It will take with him in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Verse 15. It says, for this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming, coming, coming of the Lord, shall not prevent, proceed, hinder them which are asleep. In verse 16, it says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first verse 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds it says to meet the Lord in the air. Second coming. He is coming again. And when he comes again, the dead in Christ will rise. And we which are alive will be cut up, will be raptured, will be taken up without any power, without any force, pulling us down. And it says we'll meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Second Thessalonians, I'm reading from uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from uh, heaven, when he will come from heaven with his mighty angels. Then in verse 8, it says, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. When he comes again, he'll bring judgment, devastation on them that do not know God. They know about God, but they don't know God. They've heard some spattering knowledge about God, but they do not have a no-so experience with God. They do not have the knowledge that they are the children of God and they are satisfied with knowledge. I read the Bible. I study the Bible. 
But what they study is only hanging in their head. It does not go deep into their heart. Those people that know not God and they do not obey the gospel. Now people think, I receive the gospel. Go further. Obey the gospel. There are commandments to obey. As we come to the Lord and we have the gospel of grace, then we practice the gospel of godliness. But there are people that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ comes, they will not be taken away. It tells us in, um, in uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 14. And Enoch also, the servants from Adam, prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh. Enoch prophesied and he said, The Lord cometh. But he was back in Genesis. What coming? Which coming was he talking about? Is it the first coming that happened? Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 to verse 23. I is not referring to that. How do we know? Because he said, Behold, the Lord cometh. Jude chapter 1 i'm reading verse 14 in jude chapter 1 verse 14 it says behold the lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints when he came the first time he didn't come with thousands of saints but it's referring to the second coming of the lord in verse 15 it says to execute judgment upon all it wasn't referring to the first coming he didn't come to execute judgment upon all at the first coming he came he will come to execute judgment upon all and to convince them all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him revelation chapter one we're talking about the coming the prophecy and the coming the prophecy and the promise of christ's second coming and in revelation chapter 1 verse 7 it says behold he cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so the church said Amen. Look at verse 8. Verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. Is coming. To come. The Almighty. Revelation chapter 2 verse 25. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 25, but that which ye have already hold fast till i come always referring to the fact he is coming again you have salvation hold that fast sanctification hold that fast sound doctrine the word of god and the word which cannot be contradicted hold that fast you have the experience of the power of the holy ghost hold that fast you have conviction you have consecration that thing which you have already hold fast till i come look at verse 26 in verse 26 and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end 
to him will I give power over the nations. We have power at salvation. We have more power at sanctification. We have power for the service of God. But now, when he comes again and he meets us ready, he says he'll give power over the nations. Look at chapter 3, verse 11. Revelation 3, 11. Behold, I come quickly telling us and repeating over and over again in the last book of the bible behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown no man will take your crown the crown of righteousness that the lord will give the faithful servants at his coming at his appearance what makes ministers to lose their crown because they want crowds they want many people to believe in them and they are told if you preach holiness people will not come and he wants people to come more than to prepare people for heaven and so he shifts and they are told, now, if you continue the words of Christ, continually, consistently, they're going to lose a lot of people. Because in the world in which we live, they don't, everybody does not like anymore. More, one wife with one man. If you hold on to that, and you shout it out, and you speak it out, you're going to lose a lot of people and you want your church building to be filled because of that they leave that they do not keep on hold fast to what they have and then they have some people that say i love you i love your ministry and i support you but you know what if you keep on reading every part of the bible holding on to every part of the bible I'm sorry, I feel offended because there are some of those things you've been preaching 10 years ago, 20 years ago, before you started this GCK, which brings everybody now together and all of us are supporting you that you're an agent for the unity of religious people. And now, if you don't draw the emphasis on those things of 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we will not rally around again. And, they, and he wants people to rally around. So he drops all those things. Have I dropped enough? Uh-uh. Drop this one too. Have I dropped enough? Drop this one too. You know, you will lose your crown if you do that. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown crown and look at uh, verse 12 there in verse 12 it says him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name revelation chapter 16 verse 15 in chapter 16 verse 15 behold i come he tells us over and over and over again he tells his church he tells the saints he tells the righteous he tells the people that will listen behold i come as a thief blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and he see 
is shame. Look at Revelation chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 7. Revelation 22, verse 7. Behold, I come. I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saints of the prophecy of this book. Look at uh, verse 12. In verse 12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, he which testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus is coming. Coming for you. Coming for me. Coming for us. And you will be found worthy at the time of his coming in Jesus' name. Point number two, we're looking at the plan and program of Christ's sudden coming the plan was the plan is going to be in stages number one the first stage that be the rapture when he comes rapture he'll take the dead in christ they'll rise up and those of us that remain alive will be caught up together with them to meet him in the air and the next stage will be the great tribulation on earth while the rapture church is up with the lord then the people of the world will be going through the great tribulation and then after the great tribulation he'll come back and with the church with the church militant triumphant he will come back and then he will reign on the earth. Let's look at the plan and the program of Christ's sudden coming. We're looking at um, John again, chapter 14, verse 1. In John chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be not, be not, uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe in creation. You believe in God, the creator. You believe that the administration of this world is in the hand of God. He has not abandoned the world into the hands of caretakers. And then he's forgotten the earth. And whatever they do on the earth, that's their choice. No, he's still in charge. The creator. Is the administrator, is the governor, is the ruler of the whole universe. Believe that. You believe in God. Believe also in me as Savior, as Redeemer, as the one that upholds all things by the word of his power. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, in my father's house, a many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you in verse 3 and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself at the rapture he comes to receive the church unto himself the believers unto himself, the standing saints unto himself. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and take prepared people for the prepared place and receive you unto myself that where I am, where I am, there ye shall be also. That's talking about the rapture, and it's a mystery in First Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, we shall not all die, 
but we shall all be changed. That's the rapture. That's the first part. As he comes, he comes for the church. He comes for the church glorious, without sport, without blemish, without any such thing, without wrinkle, but they are holy unto the Lord and he will come and take them. In verse 52, it tells us in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Is the rapture is talking about there in first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that she sorrow not even as others which have no hope look at verse 14 in verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him verse 15 it says in verse 15 for we say unto you by the word of the lord this is the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ, those who are dead outside Christ, they died as sinners, they died as backsliders, at this time they will not rise up. It will be at the coming when he comes to establish his um, millennial reign and all the nations are gathered before him. It's at that time, those of that dead people outside Christ will be called and they will be judged. And whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. But at this time now, when he comes at the rapture, the dead in Christ shall rise forth. In verse 17, then we which are alive, alive in Christ, alive in righteousness, alive with conviction, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, that's what the people, the saints that rose with them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I will be there. I will be there. Verse 18, it says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Colossians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ spiritually, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Verse 2, it says, Set your affection on things above. Go beyond eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Go beyond planting and building. Go beyond the things of this world. Go beyond this, this, uh, the, the, the superficial life of the people that do not have any hope of his coming. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In verse 3, it says, For ye are dead, and your life is healed. But Christ in God. Verse 4. 
and when Christ who is our life shall appear rapture then shall ye also appear with him in glory now after the rapture there will be the great tribulation in Matthew chapter 24 verse 21 Matthew chapter 24 verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation the words of Christ then shall be great tribulation but the saints the children of God will not go through the great tribulation why because Noah did not go through the flood he was rescued secured in the ship before the flood came the great tribulation is not for saints it's not for the church why because lord and his family escaped before the fire came down and the lord has not appointed us unto wrath he has appointed us unto salvation he tells us in that matthew chapter 24 verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world until this time no nor ever shall be nor ever shall be it tells us in luke chapter 21 verse 25 luke chapter 21 verse 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. Look at the next verse there, 26. A man's heart filling them for fear and for the looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged or sufficient drunkenness and the cares of this world so that that day come upon you unawares so that the great tribulation come and then we're not prepared in verse 2 in verse 35 for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell the unbelievers the careless the carnal the fleshly the forgetful as a snare shall that great tribulation come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Verse 36. It says, Watch. Watch ye therefore. And pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. To escape the great tribulation. That you are ready. That at the time Christ will come for the saints. You are ready it says pray and watch that she may be accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man you will escape you will escape I pray you'll not go through the great tribulation in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 6. Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail or child. Wherefore do I see every man, every man on earth, on the earth with his hands? on his loins as a woman in travail 
and all faces are turned into paleness. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the time of the great tribulation. But Jacob, Israel, the remnant of Israel shall be saved out of it. It will be a time, the great tribulation, when the people of Israel that see that this is the fulfillment of the great tribulation period that they will turn to the Lord. The remnant of them, those who will die would have died. And those who will perish would have perished. And then the remnant will call upon the Lord. And those, the remnant, will be saved. Deuteronomy, I'm reading from chapter 4, verse 30. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, Israel, Tribulation will come. Eventually, Christ will come first. He will plead with you. He will kind of, he will preach unto you. And many of you will not accept. And so, he will go back to heaven. Because he came for the first time and you will not accept. And then, uh, he will replace Israel with the church. And the church will now be the Israel of God. And when you realize that you who were the natural branches were cut off and the wild branches were brought from the jungle, from the wilderness and grafted into the good olive tree. And now you realize what you miss the church has taken and when the period of the church is over. And the church is raptured and is going to heaven. And now you see that you are in the great tribulation. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon you, even in the latter days, in the latter days, latter days after the first coming of Christ, latter days after the period of the church, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto him, then you will receive them. After that great tribulation, now Christ will come. He'll come in power. He will come with the saints because he now comes to establish his reign over the earth. Look at Isaiah chapter 26. We're looking at verse 20. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. The church will be in a secret place of the Lord. They will be collected one by one by one all over. And they will be with the Lord until it will be like a little moment. A period of seven years. When you consider seven years with, uh, you know, 7,000 years, seven years will be a little moment. And then the indignation eventually will not be forever. The indignation will be overpassed. And then he tells us in verse 21, it says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth during the great tribulation for their iniquity and the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain and it tells us in uh, first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you again. I write unto you in verse 2. In verse 2 it says, for yourselves know 
perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as is Eve in the night. In verse 3, it says, When for when they shall see peace and safety, when the people of the world will say, Do we need peace through Christ? No, we can manufacture the peace ourselves. Do we need all those uh, preachers going about and representing the Prince of Peace to bring peace? No. We can have associations, organizations of nations that will bring peace when they shall say peace and safety. Then shall sudden destruction come, come upon them as travail upon a woman. The rapture will take place when the people were not expecting and the great tribulation of travail will come upon them and they shall not escape. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should come, should overtake you as a thief. Verse 5, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Verse 6, in verse 6, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Verse 7, for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night verse 8 in verse 8 but let us who are of the day be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love for and for an ailment the hope of salvation now verse 9 verse 9 for God has not appointed us to us. Great tribulation period is a period of wrath. And the suffering and the tribulation and the punishment of the time of the great tribulation is wrath. But God has not appointed the church to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. You will not go through that wrath. I will not go through that wrath. For Thessalonians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 10. In verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven. That's what the church is doing now. We're waiting for his son from heaven. Whom he raised from the dead. That is the son raised from the dead. Even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. We are not going to go through the great revelation. The church is not going to go through the great revelation. We are waiting now for the rapture. And it can happen anytime. Point number three now. Point number three is the pursuit and preparedness for Christ's soon coming. The pursuit, the preparedness for Christ's soon coming. We've heard, we've learned, we've seen in all these scriptures that Christ is coming again and that Christ will come. It will come for the church. In at the rapture, what should we be doing now? We should be preparing. We should be pursuing what the Lord wants us to pursue until he comes and that will be soon. Matthew chapter 25. I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew 25 verse 1 Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins 
which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Then in verse 2, it says, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Five of them, half of the ten, fifty percent of the people wise, and fifty percent foolish. Now, we as preachers, we as teachers, we as pastors, yes, we know that the world is there, and the world needs to be converted, but the church there the church too is there and if you're a pastor you're here you're there the people that god has made you to watch over you are not with them and 50 percent of them they're becoming foolish they're becoming non-chant non -chant and they're becoming not caring for the things of the of the Lord, they are becoming foolish. They are burying their head in the activities of life, and they are no more ready for the coming of the Lord. And you're still you just leave the church there. They have doctrine. They have the word. They have their local leaders. Five of them were wise. And five of them are foolish. And all those places you are going, you are here, you are there, you are there. Those people, and they're not your regular people. And those people are telling you, preach this, but don't preach this. Emphasize this, don't emphasize that. Don't allow the people to think you are here. To raise deeper life. Preach, to preach holiness. Because if you preach holiness, if you preach righteousness, if you preach rapture, if you preach, the great tribulation will come after that. If you preach that when Christ comes, not every church goer will make it. They will think you're establishing, uh, you want to establish deeper life. But so they will not think like that because we know you. You don't want to establish deeper life, do you? I don't know what answer to give to that. And you are here and there, and the people, they don't even want the message that will make them ready for the coming of the Lord. And the people you leave at home, in the fold, five of them wise, five of them foolish, and the preacher himself becomes foolish. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, And they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. Verse 4. In verse 4, but the wise took oil, the symbol, the emblem of the Holy Spirit. They have the witness of the Spirit, and they make sure that that is intact every time. The oil is the symbol, emblem of the Holy Spirit. It leads them into the truth of sanctification. It leads them into the experience of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The oil is the emblem of the Holy Spirit that flushes out all the friction, all the conflict out of their lives. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Verse 5, and in verse 5, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. In verse 6, it says, And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then in verse 7, in verse 7, then uh, all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. 
verse 8 in verse 8 and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil how is that possible the witness of the holy spirit and the believer in the virgin is not possible we, we can't share that the strength the power the unction of the holy spirit that makes us ready makes us watchful we cannot share that with other people it's been so busy that the essential thing is been so busy that the non dispensable or the non negotiable the holy spirit in his life is forgotten all that life goes on shallow shabby life goes on without the strength of the power of the spirit from within and now they say give us of your oil for our lambs are gone out verse 9 and the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves verse 10 in verse 10 and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready ready because they kept the righteousness of faith ready because they kept the restitution the fruit of repentance ready because they had an ongoing relationship with the lord and they had not dropped that behind following after pursuing activity they that were ready no condemnation in the heart they come with a conscience void of offense toward god and toward man and every detail of what they have heard as to preparing for the coming of the lord they made sure that they had time to pray and the time to seek the lord and the time to have everything they ought to have they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut look at verse 11 in verse 11 afterward came also the other virgins the careless virgins the carnal virgins and the superficial virgins and the virgins that will not get the essential of experience that leads them to go through that door when the rapture takes place after what came also the other virgins saying lord lord open to us look at verse 12 in verse 12 but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not backsliders i know you not worldly fellow i know you not carnal i know you not careless i know you not unprepared people i know you not look at verse 13 here is the conclusion of the lord himself after that parable watch therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh matthew chapter 24 in matthew chapter 24 we're looking at verse 44, Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready, 
the people at the time of Noah, they were not ready. Be ye therefore ready. The people at the time of Lord, they were not ready. Be ye therefore ready. And Lord's wife was not ready. Sodom was inside her. Pleasure, seeking pleasure. The pleasure of the world was inside her. The association with Sodom and the people in Sodom and the property in Sodom. All that was in her heart. And when the angel said, escape, do not look back. And then the fire was now coming after they left. The husband, Lord, he was going. And the two daughters, they were going. And Lord's wife looked back. There's too much behind. Too much in Sodom. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And Jesus warned. He says, be ye therefore also ready. Remember Lord's wife for in such an hour as she think not the son of man cometh. He is coming. I pray you'll be ready. James chapter 5, verse 7. James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Do not allow impatience to take over your life. The world, hurry, hurry, hurry. And they're running nowhere. And they do not, the world, they do not have time to have finished this. After that, go to this and finished. And the world has a lot of unfinished projects. The project of salvation. Have you finalized that? Have you settled that? And the experience of sanctification. Have you finalized that? Have you settled that? The power of the Holy Ghost promised, provided for us. Have you said all that? You have a lot of knowledge on this and this and that. Have you possessed them? Why don't you settle this salvation? This restitution. Why don't you settle that? Are you going to, you know, keep on going in a kind of a heart that's always wandering? When will I have power to do this restitution? You can have the power now. You can have the grace now. Why are you just, you know, go in and go in and go in? I want to hear this. I want to hear that. Have you settled? Have you possessed what you have heard already? Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waiteth. For the precious fruit of the earth. And ask long patience for it. Until he receive the early and the latter rain. Look at verse 8. In verse 8. It says, be ye also patient. Establish your heart. Let your heart be established. In righteousness and holiness that you are no more wavering here and there. Can I have that? Should I have that? Should I make myself pray until I am established in the Christian experience, in the Christian virtue that will take me to heaven? Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nice. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, grudge not one against another. Grudge not one against another. We need to settle that. We need to go to the Lord because if the grudges are there, if the inner turmoil is there, if we're always in our heart, Condemning him, condemning her. Maybe we don't talk. Maybe we don't have chance 
to voice out the grudges and the condemnation and the conflict but if it's there in the heart and eventually we'll discover that those grudges are based on nothing the man is standing you are grudging why is he standing the man is happy laughing you are grudging why is he happy you can be happy too you can stand too why do you want to grudge others why does grudge and murmuring or complaining becoming part and parcel permanent in our lives why don't you drop all that go back to the cross grudge not one against another brethren lest ye be condemned behold the judge standeth before the door he wants us to be ready you will be ready and then in Matthew chapter 24, this is what he wants us to pursue. What he wants us to be doing until he comes. He is coming. And he wants us to have a pursuit because he's coming. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come he wants us to pursue the preaching of the gospel penetrate our world and penetrate the globe with the preaching of the gospel he says this gospel not a kind of mutilated gospel not a kind of gospel that the heart of that gospel has been taken away not a superficial gospel a transforming gospel the saving gospel it wants this gospel of the kingdom to be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come luke chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost and after he's done his part, he's gone to heaven. And he has left that ministry of reaching out to seek and to save the lost. He's left that in the hands of everyone in the church. Not only preachers, not only pastors, not only, you know, so-called evangelists, international, or prophets, or pastors, or teachers, or apostles, is giving this to the church. And he says, this is what to pursue until he comes. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and he called his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them occupy until I come we will we'll do that I said we'll do that what are we doing we're turning sinners to the Savior we're turning the people of the world away from their worldliness we're turning them to the Redeemer. We're turning the righteous to righteousness. Daniel chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as 
have never was since there was a nation that the great revolution even to the same time and at that time the people shall be delivered everyone that is found written in the book look at verse 2 and in verse 2 it says so many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake shall rise that's at the coming of the Lord. Some to everlasting life. Those who died in Christ to everlasting life at a later time. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine. They that be wise, wise virtues shall shine. They that be wise, that seek the Lord, while he may be found, they shall shine. Those that be wise, and they hear, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And they are wise. I want to see the Lord, and they seek that holiness experience. Those that be wise, that hear, that when the Holy Ghost is come, it will guide you into all truth. I can't do without him, without his counsel, without his comfort. Those that be wise and they pray and they remain ready and prepared for the coming of the Lord. And they that be wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness. They that turn many to righteousness shall shine, it tells us, as the stars of heaven forever and ever. Did I hear an amen there? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body. Well, you have your body, your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, your whole person. And you make your whole person to be dedicated to the activities of saving souls. Activities of making saves. Activities of turning many unto righteousness. It says, will appear before the Lord that we may receive the things done in the body according to to that he has done whether it be good or bad the lord writes down puts down everything we do whether they are for the progress and propagation of his kingdom or they are for the retardation and drawing back of the hand of the clock in his kingdom he writes down everything good or bad and when he comes will be the time he rewards everyone according to their works and then in verse 11 in verse 11 he says knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men, will persuade sinners come receive the Lord we persuade backsliders return come back into the fold we persuade the believers abide until he comes second timothy chapter 4 we're reading from verse 5 in second timothy chapter 4 verse 5 but watch thou in all things Endure afflictions. Do the work 
of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Verse 6. In verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7. In verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Revelation chapter 22, we're reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Verse 13. In verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Look at verse 15. It says, For without outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the mongers and the murderers and the idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The Lord is coming. Or seen the prophecy. Or seen the promise. We've read about his plan. We've read about his program stretched out that is coming. And we've heard about the pursuit and the prepared readiness. He wants us to get ready. He wants us to be prepared. You will be ready. You will be a wise virgin. The things of this world, the activities of this world will not deafen you, will not blindfold you. You'll be ready, you'll be at a lot, and when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise up, and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them. My brother, what is the person I'm calling my brother? My sister, with the person I'm calling my sister, will be there together. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Lord, make me ready. Lord, keep me ready. Are you saved? You must be saved. Are you sanctified? You must be sanctified. Are you watching and praying? He wants you ready. Pray that you be ready. 